Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Enlighten Up podcast. And as you can see, for those of you watching on YouTube or Spotify, I am joined by two lovely returning guests, Gilliana Aachen and Katie Kyleen. You guys remember Gilliana, who was on recently, Decoding Soul Contracts. And Katie was on previously about almost two years ago, talking about the will of God and how important it is to allow God in. And today we're going to be talking about partnerships, soulmates, a true soulmate versus a karmic partnership. What does that all mean? And what do you as a woman need to do to prepare yourself for allowing that divine true soulmate to come in? First of all, before we get into all of that, ladies, how are you both? We're great. We're so good. We are coming to you from beautiful Sedona, Arizona today, where we're spending this whole week essentially channeling in the information that we're going to talk about today. So this is like hot off the press for your guests, you know? <laughs> how how is how has the energy been for you guys in in supporting the channeling and all the the downloads and the information that you've been receiving? We've been in awe, truly in awe, um, and in awe of how the creator has created us to find love. And so we're in deep discovery mode and, and sharing stories and, and reminiscing um, and understanding that the creator loves us so much that we are all so worthy of finding our perfect match. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been absolutely um mind-blowing in some ways, you know, and in other ways I've been telling Katie, I'm like, you know, this is information that I feel like I've known, but I felt like these were my personal opinions. I didn't realize some of these were actual knowings I must've received at some point in life as well. And just it's, it's, it's having that validation as well. Yeah. It's amazing. Like I feel the, the, the further along we go in this journey and the further along we allow ourselves to open up to this process of revealing, you know, our deeper connections, who we really are, the information that comes through really isn't always, doesn't feel new, does it? It feels like you've known it before and you're reconnecting with it once again. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. You said it so perfectly. <laughs> yeah. So as we like reconnect with ourselves, we reconnect with the wisdom and the knowledge from a lot of our past lives through what actually exists just in the, our connection of having that connection to source energy, creator, God. So how, what have you guys been surprised by most? Have you been surprised by anything that's come through? Has anything kind of like thrown you for a little loop or uh, anything like that? I, I don't, I would say one thing that was a pleasant surprise yeah. is creator promised that love is within each and every soul. And every single person who wants to be in love in this lifetime can find true love. And that was more of a, a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that was a really good knowing because so many times women come to me, clients come to me and they say, you know, I just don't believe there's anyone here for me in this lifetime. And now I can say for sure, actually, <laughs> if you're open to it. It's always a possibility. I mean, I know if I question, I know so many of my clients have questioned it, my girlfriends, even men, you know, like maybe I'm just meant to be alone. Maybe I'm not meant to be with someone. And in a way, do you feel like that's a, almost like a resistance 
to what's available to you truly? I think we there's certain information that we have really forgotten over time, and that is how to connect to our soulmate, how to access our soulmate's energy, how to draw in our soulmate. So we were, we were actually talking about it, how throughout history, some of this deep ancient wisdom, you know, that, that goes thousands of years old has been lost. And because it's been lost, it leaves us in a place of defeat and hopelessness when we don't have access to these knowings and we don't have ways of connecting to it to be able to draw it in, you know? Um, and and I've, I've had so many clients that have said, you know, I, I'm just done with love. You know, it. I, I'm just done. Like, you know, I've tried it. It hasn't worked for me. You know, I, I've gone through hell. I've gone through breakups. I've been cheated on. I've been this, I've been that, and I'm just done. You know, so it's, it's when we lose that access of how to truly connect to our soulmate, it leaves a tremendous amount of hopelessness. Yeah. yeah. And I was one of those people you know, after, after going through what I went through and I was like, I just don't, I don't even, I couldn't even fathom the possibility um, of even accepting anyone in my life or wanting to love again. And I think so much of that came from all the hurt and not knowing how to fully heal from the hurt, right? Cause you've got to learn to trust again and have faith. And when we say those words, trust and faith, you know, I know for me earlier in my, in my own spiritual awakening healing journey, it was like, not that I was blaming God, you know, quote unquote, but there was this feeling of why would, why would the universe or God or the creator would allow such painful things to happen to me? And if that's the case, that means I could not be protected in the future. Right. So this is what Katie's talking about. I think is that, that there's information and knowledge, but no, obviously God didn't, or the universe didn't create this, this pain for me. It was my lack of my own knowing and my own bad decisions. And I don't know, you know, bad, I mean, I don't know if that's the right word for it, but essentially me living my human life <laughs> that caused these situations. But when you actually lean in on the creator source, universe, God, right? Whatever words you want to use, there's actually so much beauty and the trust and the faith gets realigned within you. And I myself had had to go through this process because Katie said to me, well, listen, if you want to do this workshop together, where this is a conversation we had a while ago, she's like, <laughs> you can't be in this place of your own existence, right? So she's like, we've got to put you through the process of even being open to this notion. And it was incredible because the, Nicole, the first thing I had to go through was the healing of uh, within my heart. Uh, and for me in particular, I'm okay sharing this, but for me in particular, it was this piece of vulnerability that got shut off within my heart, deep within my heart. Okay. This isn't anything I could have even consciously accessed, but I was shown this in one of the meditations, one of the healings. Um, and it happened with my ex-husband. Um, so it wasn't even the relationships after it was with him in particular. It got so shut off that there's no way my divine soulmate in in this lifetime would have been able to find my energy resonance yeah. because that's the piece of me that he would resonate with mm, yeah so you needed to needed to clean up your energy signature a little bit <laughs> yes. there you go yep okay get a get it a little shinier <laughs> polish yeah. that off right, yeah right. It's what happens with a lot of the women that come to all of us is their energy signature is not quite at the vibration it needs to be. And that's why they keep attracting, you know, well, here's okay. Tell me how you ladies feel about this because, you know, about six, six weeks or so ago, I did a second ayahuasca journey and in it, I was removed from the matrix and I was shown the vault of my own programs. And while I was like, wow, I'm outside the, the, the matrix, I can pull whatever programs I, I don't want anymore. Then if I don't want these programs. And so I was able to, because I've been so aware of them and working on them, I went in and I started pulling some programs at different, all different areas of my life. And then, um, reinstalling the new ones that I did want that I had been working towards. And I'm, shocked. I just made this announcement a couple of days ago um, from like when we're recording this, but 
to my YouTube channel that I can now safely say that I know one particular program that I removed and installed a new one is actually taken place. And it was in the realm of relationships. And oh. it was something that I never thought would ever um, come to be. But so my question is to you, when it comes to like polishing your energy signature, so to speak, right, getting it up to that vibration that will be in a resonance with your true divine soulmate, um, is part of that understanding the programs that you're running and that you're resonating at? Because those are your belief systems. And I believe that your belief systems create the frequency that you resonate at. That's such a good question. Um, so the way we are teaching um, people how to attract their soulmates is by connecting directly to the creator. Now, your, we have different types of partnerships. So I want to emphasize the type of partnership we're talking about here today is your soulmate that's chosen for you. And what I mean by that is your souls are literally made of the same cloth and you have a beautiful purpose and mission together in this lifetime together. So we're not just talking about, you know, dating, right? A random Joe or, a, you know, John or Sally or whoever. So given that, that soulmate was literally incarnated with us in our soul when we entered into this lifetime. So it is literally that connection line from you to that soulmate was there from the moment you were born. So when we are coming to attract that soulmate into our life, because it already lays within us, it's not so much about doing cleansing and clearing work. It's more about accepting that treasure that lives deep within us. That's literally in concealment. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like we've, we've disconnected from it. We've pushed it all the way to the back. And through the work with the creator, the creator brings what is within us that's deep in concealment out into the open so that we can draw in that partner to us. Because that partner came with us from the moment that we were born. It's so true. Okay. So what you said there, I think is really important. And it's just something I literally answered on a comment earlier this morning, um, where this idea, like one of the, the, the program that I'm currently working on, and I'm holding a retreat at the end of September here in Colorado is to kind of go into the secret self, the parts of us that we've hidden, that we've concealed, that we don't let people see because we've devalued. We don't think anyone is going to love those parts of us, all, all those things. I've noticed that when I started to bring those things forward and all the things that I thought were the really, you know, the things that would stay dejected were actually my greatest treasure. And when I brought those forward, that's actually when people started to like me more and so and, and connect with me more. And so it would form these deeper bonds, deeper connections. And so what is it about that? part of us that we keep so concealed and we think is not part of us, but God has intended that to be like our shining light, that gem that is almost like a beacon to, for our, our, our divine soulmate. So what's the, what's concealed that's very beautiful that other people are getting attracted to, Nicole, isn't the blockages in your mind, aren't the patterns in your mind. It's the beauty of your soul that's what's coming out of concealment. And sometimes when we're born and we go through life, there are these treasures that are hidden within inside of our soul, like our soulmate, like our purpose, you know, who we really are that get concealed over time. So what you're bringing out of concealment that's drawing others to you is literally the shine with inside of your soul. And with inside the soul, those treasures lay. And one of the treasures that lay is your divine partner that is chosen by the creator for you. Mm. So that's what we're bringing out of concealment. Not so much the layers of fear, like, you know, I'm not worthy of love and things of that level. We're not bringing our fears to the light. We are bringing our truth to the light because it's our truth that calls more truth to us. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a Okay. I, I, maybe the way I'm going to word it is going to sound wrong, but it's almost like a quantum workaround. And, and I don't mean it in a sense of like, you're trying to bypass something, but it's almost like 
there's another way. Like there's always another way, right? And so you can choose which way you want to go about it. And I think as a collective on this planet right now, we're learning so much about our belief systems and how we work with energy and all of that. And we think that there's this method, but one of the things that I'm always being shown, especially the more I go deeper into myself is that there's always a different way and not that any way is wrong, but what way is going to work best for you? And maybe, you know, if you want to move through something quicker (laughs) and it's not that you're trying to find the Yeah, but it's not trying, you're trying to find like the easy route, like, you know, like that quick fix pill kind of mentality. It's not about that. It's just knowing that there are other ways. Absolutely. Totally. Yes. And, and because the thing is, is Nicole, we can do all this cleansing and clearing work where we are worthy, where we feel like we're valued, where we feel like we're important, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to attract our soulmate in because again, our soulmate is a treasure that was gifted to us from the moment we incarnated here on earth. So if we heal all of our worthiness issues, but we're still concealing that treasure in the back of our soul and we haven't allowed for that treasure to come forward it doesn't matter how much cleansing work we do we have to still access that treasure and allow it to come forward and take form in our auric field so we can call in the creator uh, so that the creator can call in that soulmate for us if not it it's it's just like the titanic it it stays underneath in the depths of the water you know forever and you know it's like a jewel that we never get to see So, okay. I have two questions for you. The first one is, um, okay. So what would be the main reason? I'm sure there's plenty, but what would be the main reason why, even if you've gone through a lot of your healing of your own worthiness and your own value and appreciating yourself, seeing yourself, why would you still keep that concealed? Because most people don't know how to access it, right? Most people do not know how to access the jewels in the soul. And this is one thing that we have been in awe of with with the work that we've been doing lately is that this is everybody's birthright and people have literally forgotten how to access it. And the creator said something so beautiful in one of our channelings. The creator said, you attract your soulmate through my hands as in your soulmate is standing with me. So don't go out into the world taste testing to see, is this the right one? Is this the right one? Is this the right one? You have to go opposite. You have to go deeply inwards and allow the creator to bring it forward for you and orchestrate life in a beautiful way that will allow the two of you to meet. And wouldn't you say that women these days, men these days, people these days are doing it the other way around? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I, I think what happens is, um, at least in my experience, people go outside of th- themselves to discover who they are, right? And so, Nicole, I think this answers your question. Why would you still conceal it? It's, I think oftentimes we're not consciously aware of these jewels that we're carrying. And so people just tend to, it's, it's a normal human thing to do, right? Let me date around. And through dating, we discover what I like, what I don't like, who I am, who I'm not. And what Katie is saying, you've got to go deep within yourself to discover these things and actually, again, lean in on the creator to, to, to create the connections. It, it, it's not a tip. It's just not how our brains work. So yeah. even talking about it, sometimes it's like, well, is that even logical, yes. you know? But I think that's why it happens the way it does. And I think that's what you're asking. Oh, and God. it's so crazy. The words you guys are using, because just so the audience knows, we did not talk about this at all. Like we have not, I know what you guys had been working through the, the verbiage that you guys are using. So in one of my, um, you know, a lot of I've downloaded, I've channeled some of it's been through plant medicine journey. Some of it's just been in my own meditation and one of the things that I've written into my forbidden journey program is, is to show people how to polish off the gems that belong to the crown of their kingdom and put them back in their rightful place. And, and that's what you're talking about. So these gems, like the gem of your soulmate and like other gems that the creator has gifted you because so often, you know, we don't realize that they've lost their place in the crown that they were wearing. And so we're not ruling from the place of that um, true divinity. 
Yes, exactly. And true love is our inheritance. Mm -hmm. It's in the inheritance of the kingdoms that we've been given. I just love your words so much. <laughs> you know, that's my that's my Gemini 12th house. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and you know, Nicole, I, I've had women say to me, Katie, I don't understand. You want me to go within, connect to the creator every day and have the creator bring my life partner to me you're telling me not to go out and date? That sounds counterintuitive, you know, but it's actually true because tr true love is held in the creator's hand for us. And the creator desires for us to be in true love so deeply for us to find that match that is our perfect fit, you know? And so something that is in the creator's hands, we cannot go out into the world to try and find. We have to go inwards and allow source energy to bring it to us. And the more you do this work as you're drawing in your true soulmate, ordained by the creator, ordained by God, the more you become yourself, you know, the more you become your true self in the process. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't mean you don't go out and you don't participate in the world and you don't do what you love. You actually do more of that, you know, and then when divine timing comes, mm -hmm. the creator will bring that partner right to your doorstep, you know? Okay. So you're not saying, cause I, I would not say to someone, don't date, don't like do any of that, because I think it's important just to do the things that you would normally do or you feel you feel guided to do or whatever but you don't want to try and control it like you don't want to go in there and think this is the way it's got to happen like you've got to be really open and surrendering to the possible to really just any kind of possibility because mm -hmm. it sounds yeah. like it would show up in like the most unexpected way what i'm saying is don't go out there and taste test taste test is let me see if John is right for me. Let me see if Amanda's right for me. Let me see if Sally's right for me. There is already a partner that the creator has chosen for you here on earth that it wants to sync you up with. So if there already is that next person that you are ready for in the next season of your life and the next chapter of your life that the creator has chosen, you don't need to go out there and taste test anymore. What you need to do is to be your true self. If you love to go paint, go to painting classes. You know, if you love to kayak, go kayak. If you love mountain climbing, go mountain climbing. The creator will orchestrate your meeting as long as you are being your true self. You don't need to go out there and taste tests anymore. You just have to be your authentic self, right? Right. But that's, I think that's exactly what Nicole is, is clarifying and asking. So Nicole, you're not wrong in saying that, um, they, for instance, I don't date, like we can use me as an example, right? I'm like, there's no need for me to date because when the timing is right, the joke is he might actually show up at my doorstep, right? And I'll tell you where this joke came from because uh, what well, joke, not joke, but um, I got really sick a few months back and I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was COVID or the flu, but I mean, it was so bad, like fever spike. And I called one of those like services to come and give me an IV, you know, like, like a mobile nurse. And so they come to my house, I open the door and there's this guy and I'm like, I, I don't know why I was expecting to be a woman for some reason, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, I'm a high fever and he comes in and he saw my um, Kabbalah book that was sitting next on the couch. And he's like, oh, you study the Kabbalah? And then he said, it's so right. I'm like, he knows what this is. Um, he takes up his hoodie and he had a tree of life, um, the Kabbalistic tree of life tattooed on his arm. And he's telling me how he studies with these Orthodox rabbis. And, and I was like, holy, crap. I knew, I kid you not, Nicole, I felt like this is a wink from God saying to me, when the time is right, I will bring your guides literally to your doorstep, <laughs> right? No, he wasn't, the guy wasn't even like that. But to me, it was this message of anything's possible. Anything's possible. You don't have to date to find this person. So I think that's what we're saying is you don't have to date. Now, if obviously if a woman wants to go and date, I don't know that we would say, no, don't do that. But what we're saying is when you're ready, you know, God, God creator is going to bring you that person, whether you're sitting at home with your doors locked <laughs> or dating. So. Yeah. And the creator 
source spirit, whatever it is that you want to call it, has full control over everything in the physical world. We have to remember that. So for the creator to orchestrate meetings is a piece of cake. We've lost trust in the creator to do that. And, and, and that's where uh, some of, some of the, the problems are when you said is, how are people not meeting their soulmate ordained by the creator? It's because they've actually lost trust that the creator can bring it to them directly. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you a story. I had this lady, she had been through so many bad relationships. I mean, she was just so tired. She's like, Katie, I am tired of learning these life lessons. Like, I don't want to learn another lesson from another man because I have learned so many. I mean, I am up to here now, you know? And so I said, okay, we're going to do it differently this way. So we got into a session and we asked the creator, creator, what do we do? And the creator said, I want you every single night to connect to me and allow me to orchestrate and bring your soulmate to you. And your job as you're sitting there every night energetically is to allow me to enter into your energy and your soulmate's energy to prepare you both to get onto the same path. So she was so dedicated to this, Nicole. She literally made me create her an hour recording that she could listen to every night where she, where she could work with the creator and the creator could come and prepare for her destiny to meet her soulmate's destiny. So she did this and she did it for a full year, Nicole, full year, like religiously every day. At the end of the year, she comes to me and she's like, Katie, I've done it. I listened to you. I didn't even go out and, and taste test as you, as you like to joke about. And he's still not here. So we got into another session and the creator said, trust in divine timing and continue the work. You are on the path and you are on the way. So she goes back, does it for another six months. So now we're at a year and a half. Mm -hmm. She comes back, still no soulmate. And now she's like, Katie, but you told me, the creator told me. I'm like, okay, let's go back and channel and ask. And the creator said the same thing. My, my daughter, I am bringing your paths together. You must trust in divine timing. As much as I have to work on you, I have to work on preparing your soulmate to meet you as well. So she went back, continued, did it for another six months. At the two-year mark, the craziest thing happened, Nicole. One of her friends invited her to like this like brunch type thing. And this other guy had come in from town who was a friend of a friend of a friend's and he got invited to the brunch. And weirdly enough, they they were sat next to they sat next to each other. And these two were like two peas in a pod their mission like they the, the the way they thought the the way they processed things you know and the guy had said two years ago he went through a spiritual awakening process that changed his entire life that made him make the decisions that he needed to to get to where he was now, to literally be sitting in the chair next to him. Long story short, they're married, they have kids, like they are like one of the most beautiful couples I have ever seen. So wow. this is what I mean by trusting in the creator's energy, not settling along the way because you are lonely and waiting for the creator to orchestrate your beautiful connection to your soulmate. I think that is something that can be one of the most frustrating parts of this journey is the journey of divine timing and trusting that it's going not going to be on your your divine timing watch it's going to be on creator's divine timing watch and I think there's obviously we have this idea of course because we look at everything so linearly that if I'm doing all this work then where's the payoff? You know, like when is it going to show up? And it doesn't always work in the way that you think it's going to. And that is a part of the faith that is rebuilt through the whole process of this journey, because I think that's one of the most uh, integral pieces of the fabric that brings the tapestry of these two soulmates together is 
the t- part of uh, the thread of faith. And so when the thread of faith gets woven in, it's almost like that becomes the tie that pulls you together. Our words are so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because literally in our channeling, what the creator said, this is not manifesting. This is attracting your soulmate through faith. So oh, no way. <laughs> you used Nicole are, are crazy. Yeah, I know. And that's what you said earlier is the words we're using. So it's like, we're using the same words. And like you said, it's not like we sat down and prepped our words beforehand. No. And I think but... explain to them the difference between manifesting and, and attracting your soulmate through faith. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think most of us have been taught if you want something, you've got to manifest it, right? That's, I mean, that's how I've known things to be. And what I've come to realize through this process is you can easily manifest another partner into your life if that's what you choose to do. But this work in particular has nothing to do with manifesting. It has everything to do with, again, faith, trust, leaning in on the creator and allowing that energy to connect the two souls together on their path, right? So this is where I would tell people, you got to put your manifesting skills aside (laughs) and focus on um, this new way of connecting. And I say new because, and I don't know that this is new, this is probably an ancient way that's been lost, but for me, it was new. And I think for many people um, coming in to do this work with us, it's it's a new way, even though it's actually ancient and, and our souls, our souls are already attuned to it because our souls know how to do this. Our human mind just hasn't cut up yet. Isn't in the Kabbalah tradition, they have the, the something called the Beshert. Yes. And that, that's, it's, it's, it's an ancient knowing, right? Yeah. It's ancient teachings. It is. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of ancient teachings. Well, it's interesting because the idea of manifestation does come from a place of believing you don't have it already, you know, like, and like, it's not already within you. And so I can see how, you know, um, and I'm not saying like, it's everything's got lessons that we're all learning, we're evolving, we're going to new stages. It's not that anything's obsolete. You know, it's not that, but it's also understanding, well, how do I take something to the next level now? And what's the next level of that? And I think that's just where we're going with all of this. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I love that because even in, so, oh gosh, I created a course called the womb of activation and it was called, um, goddess codes and keys to unlocking the hidden mysteries of the universe and how to, in, in, in the course I teach, Um, I go through a meditation. I've created a meditation where I teach them how to weave, you know, um, other dimensions of reality into this one. And as we're kind of talking, I can see that the common thread does need to be faith because everything that I've been shown in my visions is starting to come true, but it's coming true at a much later time than I had thought it would or wanted it to. And it's, I'm starting to really understand this idea of divine timing and that it's not so much what I have to do in the manifestation, but all it's, it's truly been about, like you said earlier, living my most authentic self and life. And Nicole manifestation happens through the mind. It's the mind saying, hmm, what do I want? Well, I want blue eyes. I want him to have a six-figure, you know, career and uh, definitely has to travel. But I don't want the Asian countries, uh, only the Arctic ones. And that's manifestation. It's So manifestation is tapping into your desire body and using your mind to write down the list of what it is that you want. And we're talking a level, I would like to say that is even more supernatural above that, which is knowing that the creator already has someone for you. Hence the list is not necessary anymore. And trusting that the creator knows you so deeply that it's only going to connect you to the person that you were created to be with. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about soulmates ordained by the creator 
is that they have a common mission together, a common purpose. So they're not just meeting for love, which by the way, their love is the most explosive love that you can ever even come into contact with, but they're even meeting for a deeper purpose, a deeper mission, something to do on this earth that will make a difference to humanity. And that's what makes it such a whole complete relationship as well, mm. you know? And then the, what people usually get mixed up with is we have two other types of ways that we can attract, you know, our mates. Okay. Well, yeah, let's get into this because we didn't really kind of go over this idea of like, first talk about the difference of what's a true soulmate versus like a karmic partner, because we didn't, we didn't touch on that yet. And I think that we can then like go a little bit deeper into the different types of partnerships that are available. Yes. So um, I like to say there's three types of partnerships. Um, the first type of partnership is um, what I like to call partnerships of convenience. This is like, you know, let's just say I need security. Gelly's my man. She has a lot of security. <laughs> And I'm just going to be in a partnership with it because it's convenient. Neither of our souls really want to be with each other, but because of the convenience of it, which is really based off of a fear, right? A lower energy there, we are merging. Or I've seen sometimes where uh, people stay in marriages, even though their souls really don't want to be in it, mm. but because they're just um, nervous that if they split, it will affect the children, the children's souls, yeah. even though neither of their souls want to be in it anymore, right? So those are, you know, partnerships of convenience or like, I'm very lonely, you're very lonely. Let, let, let's let huddle together and get into a relationship, right? So it's a it's a partnership that's really coming out of fear. And, and you can catch that when you see that in others, right? You're like, mm, especially in the um, older days, um, our grandmothers, our ancestors, they were forced to be in relationships, um, you know, for the divorce didn't exist. It wasn't even allowed. Right. So they were forced and locked into relationships of convenience very, very deeply. You know, divorce was frowned upon, you know, back in history. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's their first type of relationship. Then your second type of relationship is soul uh, partnerships, sorry, of attraction. So this is where you're walking into town and oh my God, here is this hot tamale. I am so attracted to Ooh, lust comes up, desire body comes up, everything comes up. And there is this strong chemistry, strong lust, you know, and you, most people mistake that for thinking that's their soulmate ordained by the creator. And they go into a relationship and it's beautiful and high at the beginning and great. But then after a few months or a few years, it starts to drop and things get messy. And usually one of the partners loses interest or pulls away faster than the other one. And that's a soulmate, uh, par sorry, partnership of attraction, you know, and it's hard because when that chemistry hits you, and you're like, oh my God, this per person is so perfect. He reads the same books that I do. You know, he, this, this, I mean, you know, he loves to hike the same way I do. But well, that's, me, that's the mind intellectualizing it. That's not the heart. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is not the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most people have lost the ability to tell the difference between what their heart is saying and what their mind is saying. So that's a soulmate of attraction. And usually a lot of clients mix that up for thinking that's a soulmate ordained by the creator, you know, and I've had clients even say, why did God even place me in front of him? You know, and the creator will literally answer and say, my daughter, I wanted the two of you to be friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I did not want this to turn into a relationship. You guys could have been best friends or you were meant to be his mentor, you know, or you were meant to help him in his healing process. This was not necessarily meant to be a relationship, right? And then our third type is our soulmates ordained by the creator. And this is one that you are born with that literally that soulmate it incarnated into this lifetime with you to meet you 
but you have to lean in on the creator to allow the creator or spirit or source to bring your paths together. And it can only happen on divine timing. And this soulmate is the most perfect fit that you can have. And the creator said it so beautifully. This soulmate will protect you more than any other person can protect you on the planet. Because its energy was created to protect your soul, to protect your mind, to protect your heart. Now, is it possible that a soulmate ordained by the creator may not be in the, like you said, like may not yet be in the right frequency to match with you. So this is like important because like you were talking about earlier, this idea of divine timing is important. So, you know, there's, <laughs> there's moving parts here because there's, it's not just about you. It's about you, another, and the creator. And so all three have to be on board. <laughs> yes. Wow. That you are picking this up faster than we're putting it down, Nicole. So yeah, hundred percent. So this is where for the women, um, it's so important to connect to the creator. And this is where Katie was using her, the example with her client connect with the creator daily or nightly. Um, and she had Katie literally record a healing session for her to do this every night to go into this energy and when she started to do that, remember how the, the, her Katie's client told her that um, when she finally met the guy, he said it was two years ago, I had a spiritual awakening. So for, because we're all women, I'm saying, so me as the woman now, mind you, I am doing this work myself. Okay. So I'm connecting to the creator now constantly to, um, I don't even want to know. I don't know if it's to help my divine soulmate, um, yeah. is the word help. Okay. But essentially he needs to have his own spiritual awakening to get on this path. So our paths can cross right in, in my relationship with my divine soulmate, as of right now, I'm maybe the more conscious one, the one that's more into spirituality, the one that's more, um, awake, he's a little bit behind. So he's got to catch up, but I can't, I don't have to manually do that for him. And I shouldn't actually be going into his energy. That could be overwhelming for him. What I have to do is connect to the creator and say, I am ready. I am here. Let's get, you know, and then the creator is the one that's going to essentially uh, connect, to him. connect to him and get him on the path. So you asked such a wonderful question. So for me, it, it, like, this is where I feel now we're sort of getting into these divine masculine and divine feminine energy roles right and i think with women we just have this nurturing side to us but you know that's part of the divine feminine i don't want to say this or even in women but it's that divine feminine energy that sort of encompasses and nurtures and can be gentle right where the masculine i mean they could be more mental and right and we all have concrete concrete yeah, yeah. so concrete. like he may be super headstrong right now and not be seeing what's happening on the peripheral and that's why he could easily miss the path but because i'm awake and i'm connecting to, to the creator i'm making sure that he doesn't miss that path mm -hmm. so really what gelly is saying is is the process that we're teaching a uh, woman is we're teaching them how to connect to the creator directly and what happens is to connect to the creator directly to draw in their soulmate so what happens is as the woman is sitting there every day the creator comes through you but also at the same time comes into your soulmate preparing your soulmate to make the choices that it needs to to have the understandings that it needs to to take the steps that it needs to for your paths to become one and this is what we call the unification process okay Okay. So let me, let me kind of repeat what in, in my, what I'm, I'm hearing is, and, and I understand this because when we even just look, okay, first you talk about how your, your soulmate ordained by the creator. Okay. Your divine soulmate ordained by the creator is literally cut from the same cloth, right? Which from our human perspective, we could look at that, like, oh, 
we're of the same ancestral DNA in some capacity, right? And so when we do our own healing, we can heal the ancestral lineage all the way down past through time. And so that activates a lot of souls in our past. So one of the things that I've seen, especially with um, one person in particular in my life who I was very connected to was that Every time I went deeper into my own healing and let go of any thought of being with this person was that eventually they would go into their own healing deeper, not because I told them to, not because whatever, but because I'm literally altering, okay, the own, my own fabric of existence by bringing it or restoring it, I should say, back to its original blueprint or its own uh, frequency, uh, its natural state of frequency that is uh, aligned for the soulmate to come in, that naturally is going to shift within the other person because they've got that same fabric. Yes. And the fabric that we're talking about that's common is on a soul level. Yeah. Yeah all level we are created from the same fabric not so much our minds and our personalities very very different you know mm-hmm. we may even have you know one may be from america the other way from me it doesn't matter even where they live in the world none of that matters right we're talking on a soul level here right so on a soul level it's from the same fabric and the way the process works is the at least the process that we teach is we teach you how to connect to the creator and uh, allow the creator you said it so beautifully this is a three-way thing so if we think of it as a triangle if we think of the creator here as we're in connection with the creator here the creator then connects to your soulmate here so every night when you're doing work we're connecting to the creator with the intention of calling in your soulmate, protecting your destinies together. So as you're connecting to the creator here, the creator then connects your soulmate here and then does the work that your soulmate needs. As a partner, the one that is calling in the soulmate, we are the guardians of protection and faith for them. Because your partner may not know necessarily how to do this work, but it does not matter. Because the moment we are in connection with the creator and we're doing that energy work, it will literally connect to their soul and their soul will begin doing the energy work Mm -hmm. with us. So we actually want to be very protective of our soulmates energy before we've even met them because your soulmate may have to go through huge life changes for them to even match on your path so it's very important for us the creator said i wish this to be a daily process why daily because it takes so much energy work and prayers and blessings for someone's path to align with inside of yours. It's not hard work. It's very easy. You literally sit there, let the energy come through the way that we teach it. And it goes within your soulmate and um, does the work. And something very beautiful happens. We call this the unification process is because Nicole, over time, as you get into this energy and do this work with the creator, your souls begin to merge literally they slowly over time begin to become one and they when they fully become one your paths fully become one and the moment your paths become one the two of you meet Mm. and as you're going through this process let's just say you do it every night 45 minutes you know at night as you're in these connection with the creator moments allowing the energy to come through you and your soulmate Nicole, you literally start feeling your soulmate soul. You start knowing things about it over time. You start having visionary experiences with it. You literally get to the point where you haven't even met your soulmate yet. And you are so clear on how your soulmate's essence feels like. It is so crazy. You start having dreams about your soulmate. I had this one woman who uh, she was in this process with us and the creator told her, whatever you do this month, keep that connection and that energy going nightly because he's in the process of moving to your state and he needs that energy and blessings so that he knows he can trust his decision to move to your Mm. state. 
-hmm. So we are literally in this type of energy work, protecting our soulmates to come into union with our souls and our lives. So it's a very beautiful ancient process where we spiritually merge before we physically meet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Makes any sense. Yeah, no, it does. It really does. And, oh gosh, I just wanted to, okay. Can we, t- can we clarify for the audience? Because I, I know this is going to be a big question mark in everyone's mind. Is there only one or are there multiple? Okay. So let's just say um, there are multiple. However, it's not multiple options. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. In a particular season of our lives, let's just say from maybe um, in a particular season, like let's just say a person from their 20s to their 50s have an opportunity to meet this soulmate ordained by God. But let's just say um, they didn't know how to, they settled, they met someone else, they married, they went through some turbulent things, got a divorce. We've all been through that, right? This is no judgment. We have all literally been through this, right? And they miss that gap within that season to meet that soulmate. And then that soulmate, let's just say that they were ordained with, moves on, has a life of its own, is settled and want, the soul wants to stay there. It, it does not want to find you anymore. Then the creator will bring in through another soul that is ordained for you. Mm-hmm. Another option we have is I have met women that have literally met their soulmates ordained by the creator, had a beautiful life with their soulmate, but let's just say their soulmate actually died young. So died in maybe 45 or 50 or 55. And then that woman still has the opportunity to meet another soulmate ordained by the creator for that next chapter of their life. So it just depends on what season and what chapter you are in. Cause remember, yeah. this is the case testing. This isn't soulmates of a tra- This isn't partnerships. Yeah. Of a tra- Cause I can see how, like, it's like when you gave in that example where you may be really ready and doing all the work, but the one who's ordained for you for that time may just be really choosing different things because free will, you can't remove free will from the equation, right? Everyone's got free will. And there's got, I always look at life as like this choose your own adventure book, you know, like I feel like that's, and and we're always going to have choices, but there's, it's like you said, it's not like it's this Tinder of, uh, you know, true ordained soulmates that you get to a catalog flip through. It's not like that at all. But there is this moment where like, if that other soul really isn't aligning in that another one's ready to step in, that's going to come in and yeah. Okay. And and Nicole, now what's really interesting is this is where most people get confused. Most of the time, let's just say Gelly is a man and she's my soulmate. He's my soulmate. (laughs) His mind may not be ready. His mind, he may be married to someone else right now in a life with someone else in another state and another country, but his soul may be ready for me. Mm. So it's very important to distinguish that. We're not talking about the mind here. We're talking about the soul. So as this is why doing the unification process is this ancient mystery that we have decoded that we are in awe of. As you're sitting there in connection with the creator and the creator is connecting to your soulmate, all of a sudden, through the work that you are doing every night, the the soulmate may all of a sudden feel like, I don't want to be in this marriage anymore. It's not fulfilling for me. That's weird. You know, and then let's just say six months later, they break up. And then six months later, the soulmate may realize, oh my gosh, I think I'm ready for career change. I want to become a naturopath. I'm, I'm, I'm just making it up. And then I'm going to naturopathic school. And six months later, we bump into each other in the hall of the naturopathic school in whatever. So my point is, is we're not, the, sometimes the mind may not be interested, may not 
it, the free will of the mind may not be interested, but there is a higher free will than the mind, and that's the free will of the soul. Mm. And as you're doing this work, unification process, connecting to your soulmate every night, the free will of the mind does not matter because the free will of the soul trumps the free will of the mind. Mm -hmm. And this is where people get confused sometimes. So your soulmate, let's just say, Nicole, we're going to make this up, maybe with someone else right now encroached in their life, but it does not mean that their soul does not want to meet you. Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah so as you do the energy work for yourself connect to the creator you know and every day support not only your path to finding but his path to finding yours miracles can happen I have seen Nicole the craziest of miracles when it was time for the two to meet do you think though that it's important for people to maybe not focus on so much supporting the soulmate's path as in that knowing that if they're supporting their own path, they are already by proxy supporting their soulmate's path. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the way I see it is that can create a bit of a codependent relationship with people in their minds, like, or it can also create a resentment where, and again, this is just the human part of us where we're doing so much. I did all this work and I'm trying to help you out. I think it's so important that first and foremost, when anyone's doing any of this work, that they're just to totally focused on their own connection to source, their own authentic self, what's making them happy and what they need to do um, first. And that by default, that automatically already sends the ripple effects down the thread of faith through source creator into your soulmate. And that's going to naturally happen. So that's an incredibly um, amazing question. And this is why Gelly was saying before, we don't directly go into the soulmate's aura because that will actually feel overwhelming for the mm -hmm. soulmate. We connect to the creator and the creator connects to them. Yeah. And remember, as you're doing this work, we call it the unification work every night, the creator also protects you on your path. So let's just say, let's just say a woman is very lonely. And it's that loneliness that's like, I want him now, I want him now, I want him now. But maybe the, her true timing is in two years. There's certain things she still needs to go through, ways that she needs to fortify inside to make that happen. As you are doing this nightly work, you are not directly entering into your soulmate's aura. You're entering into the creator and the creator is protecting both of you at the same time because the, the blessings can split between the two of you. Mm. So if you're not there carrying your soulmate on your shoulder, you're there deeply centered into the creator, knowing that the work that you're doing for yourself and your soul and your soulmate is happening. At yeah. this. And I think and that's something that people kind of confuse or um, misunderstand when they're doing the work because that's just the human part of us, you know, like that part of us that so deeply wants what we want. And um, so I just wanted to clarify that. So people understood, because I think it's a slippery slope, like for some people. It is, but it's also a very supernatural thing. And this mm -hmm. is where people sometimes can't wrap their mind around it because Nicole, as you're doing this work, it is so crazy. The more you do it, and Gelly's going to attest to this because she's actually teaching this part of the class, as you're preparing for your soulmate every night, it doesn't make you feel more emptier. It makes you feel more complete. Yes. Your loneliness actually goes away. The emptiness goes away. It all goes away. And that's why there's a part of our course that, that Gelly's going to be teaching, which is as you're doing this work, it's the creator will help you to feel so full with inside of yourself as you're going through this merging process that you don't even feel you need someone else until your soulmate comes. And this is the missing gap, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 Because, well, because you're no longer in a place of need. So you're at that vibrational frequency for partnership. Yeah. So this merging process isn't an irritating thing. It actually makes you feel more complete mm -hmm. and you actually get a stronger sense for your divine timing. Like 
I remember there was this woman who she wanted her soulmate right now. Her merging process took her three years, Nicole. But after year one, I would say within that first nine months, she found this new level of independence and fulfillment that she had never had before. And that next two years of her life, as she was continuing to work on drawing in her soulmate ordained by the creator, she wasn't even hungry for a man anymore. It was the weirdest thing. All she cared about was her own life. But she was still doing it every night, still doing that merging process every night because she knew what she was doing for her was also helping her soulmate too, which is the beautiful part of this process. So it, it's it, it it's it's a very supernatural thing. It's very beautiful and it makes us feel more complete from the inside. It doesn't make yeah. us go, where are they? Where are they? Which is how people should know that that's a process that is, oh gosh, it's it's true. You know, yes. because that that's ultimately what we're doing is we're coming back to that state of wholeness of always being in that state of fulfillment, which allows for then the fulfilled partner to also find you. Yeah. And I think what is really important for a lot of people too, is that once they start doing this work and actually feeling that divine soulmate, it gives them that peace of mind. Oh, the soulmate is here because I can actually feel their energy. And I think because the, the, the question for a lot of people is, does this soulmate even exist for me? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know for me, again, I'm using me as an example, but once I actually felt him, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> he's here and he's amazing. Like, I don't even want anything else. Right. But it gave me this almost like, just go and live your life as single as you was single, meaning like not with anybody else, because when you do meet him, you're never going to separate. Right. So almost, it was almost like the snowing, like my single days are num uh, are numbered. And I don't mean single as in, you know, I'm single out there and dating, but like not in partnership is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Right. And so for me, I also have a young daughter and to me, this is, feels like another gift because it's just me and her. So I don't need to divert my time or attention to anything else or feel any sort of you know, is this going to ever work for me? And, and again, I'm I'm not even a person of that mindset, but again, that's because I've done so much of the spiritual work, but somebody that's new coming into this, they may still be coming out of, of this mindset of, you know, because so often in society we hear, if you don't date, you're never going to find them. Um, you're getting old. No one's going to want to, you know, connect to you when you're older, right? So all these human things, I mean, they just dissipate. And it was just this knowing of he's here. And you'll connect to him when timing is right. And right now, just go enjoy your life. Mm. It was that peace of mind that was just incredible too. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and that's the whole part too, is that there are reasons. Well, I don't even want to say the, the word reasons isn't the right term. It's just that there's areas of your life that need your attention right now. And, and, and maybe your full attention. And it's not that, 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 that's ever going to not be full when there's someone there, but there's opportunities that are available to um, take part in. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and the other thing I just want to quickly mention is because this whole time we've been talking about connecting to your divine soulmate and our focus has been for single people, but a lot of what is coming through and part of what our workshop is going to focus on is for married women to actually protect their the person they're with as well so there's a protection of the divine soulmate because as katie explained to me which i didn't quite i understood but didn't quite understand you can literally be married to your person to your divine soulmate but still not be unified or merged oh really yeah yes. and that concept was new to me so if you want to talk more on that yeah talk about that for all the for all the coupled up people in the audience right now Absolutely. So, um, you know, have you heard, um, you've actually heard this in sacred scripture, we become one flesh. 
I don't know if you've heard that before, but it's in different types of sacred uh, scripture of all, all different traditions. And what that means is not that we become one body, but we become one energy. You know, and that this does not mean that we lose our sense of identity as individuals at all. So I want to make that very clear. But it means that on an energetic level, we begin to merge as one. So we have the ability to literally merge our minds together as one, our hearts together as one, and our souls together as one. And this merging process is a very gentle process that happens. It doesn't happen over, uh, it doesn't happen quickly because that would be very overwhelming and jolting for our energy field. But over time, as we go through this unification process, we can literally merge all parts of our, of our energy fields as one. Now, what I mean by that, it, it doesn't mean we melt into each other. What it means is that that layer of our energy is both directly connected to the creator as one. Mm. So we're not like melting into each other where we don't know who we are anymore. That's not what I'm talking about at all. The creator comes in layer by layer and takes its energy almost like a sheath or a cloth around both your minds and connects it to it takes your its energy or like a sheath or a cloth around both your souls and connects it to its being so you both have access you can call it the same channel okay and that's the unification process that we are talking about and the beautiful thing about that is is let's just say i have a really bad day and my mind is out of sorts if galiana is my partner she can literally connect to the creator and through that same channel my mind will be brought back into place so it's tremendously protective for couples to go through the unification process because they can protect each other energetically directly through the creator's being more easily mm, i see and I, I understand you're working, are you working specifically and only with women? Um, or what about the men out there who are wanting to do the work as well? Um, it's the exact same process for men and women. Uh, we both work with men and women. We have a workshop um, coming up in August from August 25th to the 28th. That's specifically for women wanting to meet their soulmates or women that are in partnerships that they want to protect more deeply. Um, and we take them through the unification process um, so that they can begin drawing in their soulmate ordained by the creator. And we also protect the parts within them that would make them make unhealthy choices as oh, well. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But technically men could go through the same exact process. And this is what I was saying is sometimes this, because we all have, you know, feminine and masculine energies within us. So if a man happens to be the more, you know, nur nurturing or the awakened one in really that partnership, spiritually connected, spiritually connected yeah, yeah um, then absolutely the men can do this for the, for the, their partner's soulmate. When the creator's soul touches another person's soul, the soul cannot say no. You're calling them back to their inheritance. The soul cannot say no. The mind may fight it. I don't want to go on this path. I don't want to, you know, step into my highest self, but the soul cannot say no. So it doesn't matter if the man is connecting to the creator for the other soulmate or if the woman's connecting to the creator for the other soulmate. Because the moment the creator's energy touches the other soul, the soul does not say no to the highest and best. The soul never says no to the creator's will because we are here to always be in our, in the creator's will to, to be in our highest and best. That's what the soul wants. The soul is not interested in going off path. It's the mind that derails us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, this is so exciting. I think this has been an incredibly valuable conversation. I know that we were able to talk about some things that I haven't really gone into the depth that um, we did today uh, on the podcast before. So it's been an absolute pleasure to have you ladies back on the, the show. Let, so tell the audience exactly what the workshop is when it, I know you said August 25th to the 28th, how they can sign up and um, all the details. Uh, you, oh, okay. I'll take this one. Okay. <laughs> Easy question. I'll take it. So we are hosting this in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's a physical in-person workshop. So if anyone's interested, um, 
you know, the great thing about Phoenix um, in August is that everything is really cheap. So <laughs> Airbnbs, hotels, we're holding it at Katie Spiritual Center, which is very, very centrally located. Um, it's exciting because uh, Katie's community is local in Phoenix. My community is global. And I've got some people coming in from out of state and we are merging our two communities for this event. So it's exciting for both of us from that perspective. But if anybody wants more information, uh, they can easily find it on my website. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's yes. on yours. Yeah, yeah. So mine is um, yoursoulscontract.com. So uh, souls has an S, right? Yoursoulscontract.com. And right at the top, it says women's retreat information. They click on it. All the registration and everything is right there. And of course, um, on my social media as well. It's all over my social media. I already have the links, you know, in my link and bio and all of the, all the good things. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And I'll of course leave those links for all of you guys in the show notes, uh, below, uh, this video, as well as the show, if you're listening on Apple or any other, uh, podcast, uh, platform, well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of the wealth of information you've been channeling. It's obviously very good stuff. And I want to say I'm amazed. And at the same time, I'm not like it just at some of the synchronicities that have been flowing between all three of us. It's just, to me, it's just confirmation of uh, the evolution of where we're all going and the people that are ready to go there. And I think it's time because as we continue on this journey, there's always more, there's always, and when I say more, meaning it's not that you're never satiated, there's not, but there's always new ways to learn about and ways to expand ourselves and experience things. And we got to be open to that. So thank you so much for coming on to everyone who's been listening. If you're interested in the workshop, I highly suggest you go check it out, register if you're able to. And uh, ladies, I'll definitely have to have you back on the show sometime soon. Such a pleasure. You're incredible. Thank you. Nicole. Yeah. Thank you. And guys, I'll see you next week. Um, I'm going to be bringing on a girlfriend who is currently in New Zealand, but she is coming in to help me facilitate my Forbidden Journey retreat for those of you who are already signed up in Colorado. So stick around for next week. You're going to meet her. We're going to go through some of the stuff that we're going to be taking you through on the Forbidden Journey. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining me for another show on the Enlighten Up podcast. I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all. Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and YouTube. Keep your light bright and I'll see you next week.